Before we go on, let's remind ourselves why we were doing all of this. We started off with four group means that we wanted to decompose into separate effects. One part due to the grand mean, another part due to the effect of factor A, another part due to the effect of factor B, and then finally, some residual component, a component due to the interaction between factors, the degree to which the effect of factor A depends on what level we're in of factor B. Or said differently, the effect of factor B depending on which level we are in of factor A. So we ended up with a number of different components, but we started off with just four pieces of information we were decomposing. So let's pause for a second and think about the degrees of freedom we have used so far in making this estimation. We started off by estimating a grand mean, one degree of freedom lost. We then estimated the effects of factor A, so we estimated the A terms. But remember, the A terms were yoked. The degree to which A1 was negative is the exact same amount that A2 is positive, so we lost only one degree of freedom in estimating that term. We then estimated the B terms, the effect of factor B. And just like the effect of factor A, these B terms were yoked. B1 is as positive as B2 is negative, so one more degree of freedom lost. So we've used up three degree of freedom so far in estimating those four means, and the final degree of freedom, the final amount of information we need to estimate or define those four means was used up by the interaction terms. So we had four terms here, four different values, but again, they were yoked. They were imposed by the structure of our data to be the same. Some were negative and some were positive, but only one degree of freedom. So all we've done is represent four group means with really four independent pieces of information, but now in such a way that we can test those effects. But let's pause for a second and see how all these add up to actually recover those group means. How all we're really doing is describing those group means on the basis of these separable components. So because we have the A's and B's at the margin, and the A's and B's are the same within each group level, I'm going to keep them at the margin and I'm going to retain the interaction offsets, the A, B's, within the cell. So here were the original group means, the things that we're trying to reconstruct on the basis of what we've just developed. So let's start with Gilman Drive at 8 a.m. So we have the mean for Gilman Drive, Y bar dot one one, is equal to y bar dot 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 plus a sub 1 plus b sub 1 plus a b 1 1. So let's actually do the addition and we should find that we get 670. So 741 plus negative 63, the value of a 1, plus 16, the value of b 1, plus negative 24, which gives us 670, the mean for Gilman Drive at 8 a.m. Let's try this for La Jolla Village Drive at 8 a.m. Notice we're looking for a different mean and we're gonna use different pieces. So here's how we would write the mean for La Jolla Village Drive at 8 a.m. Y bar dot two one is equal to the same grand mean 741 plus 63 in this case, the value of A2 plus 16, the value of B1 plus 24 the value of AB21, and this gives us 845. We've simply described these means in terms of different pieces, and we've done it on the basis of the geometry here. So notice, the mean for 845 is simply a function of, first, the grand mean, plus the offset associated with being in the La Jolla Village Drive group, so 63 seconds longer on average, plus some average effect due to being at 8 a.m., so 16 seconds slower at 8 a.m., which gets us almost there, plus the interaction offset, the degree to which the mean for La Jolla Village Drive at 8 a.m. was different from the sum of the average effects, the purely additive term. So all we've done is broken apart these different group means into common effects, a common effect due to factor A, a common effect due to factor B, and then that interaction offset, the degree to which the mean of that group isn't just the sum of those independent marginal effects. So going back to our model definition, our two-factor linear model deconstruction for the treatment means, let me update that ABJK term. 
I previously described it as the effect offset for the unique effect of factors in treatment JK. But really, we should be specific and talk about this as the deviation from perfectly or purely additive effects for the treatment JK. That is, the degree to which the additive effects of the A's and B's don't perfectly represent a group mean. And we're going to have the ABJK terms whenever there is some interaction in a model. Now, that doesn't mean the interaction is statistically significant. We'll come back to in a later portion of this module discussing the testing of these terms. But notice that this is in the decomposition of the treatment mean itself. The ABJKs will be non-zero to the degree that there is any interaction in the data themselves. So this is our two-factor linear model decomposition for the treatment means. But remember, our two-factor linear model includes one final piece, the degree to which individuals are deviating around their group means. And like we saw in our one-factor linear model, it will be this error, this residual from the model, that will give us the inferential power to test these other terms. Just like we saw in our previous models, it'll be those EIJKs, the errors in our model, that let us know whether our treatment effects are big or small relative to what we should expect by chance.